I think it's close to about 200 and it's been 45 years in the industry. Um, I don't look back at the number of films I've done. I rather look forward to something that may be happening in the years to come, hopefully. So yes, it's been very exciting, the journey. And uh, right now promoting uh, my film Shamitha, which is due for release on the 6th of February. And really very excited to be talking to you. We've been talking to a lot of young people here through the course of today, and they've been talking about the change in India. And that change extends just about everywhere including the film, the types of films that are, are being made. Yes, indeed. I, I think that with time, uh, morally, socially, uh, politically, things change in any country. And uh, having seen uh, almost four decades of it uh, in my career in the film industry, I, I do notice many changes, social changes, moral changes uh, that have been taking place. And cinema has, uh, at least in our country, uh, uh, reflected uh, at times what society is doing, what the morals are, and trying to make a comment or just uh, living up to expectations from the people of the country. Uh, that's interesting because uh, Karan Johari, who uh, of course you've made many, many films with, he directed a short film about a gay relationship. Now that's the sort of film that you would perhaps see in the UK or the US. Just take me through uh, how bold is that for, for India, an Indian film? India has always been uh, somewhat conservative in, in their outlook and their thinking. But I think with, uh, with modern mediums of communication that have come up in the past few years, uh, I think India is exposed to uh, a lot of stuff that is happening in other parts of the world almost instantly. Uh, I would like to believe that that has a lot to do with the temperament, with, uh, with the kind of creativity that you're seeing in cinema, on television. Um, when uh, we have 800 television channels in one country, uh, it is very difficult not to notice content that comes out from all over the world or not be impressed by it. Now, talking about change, I read that you would actually like people to stop using that term Bollywood. Tell me why. What would you prefer instead? Just call it the Indian film industry because I think that's a borrowed name. Um, um, we're okay with uh, what we do. Um, I don't see why it should be. I think it was just uh, uh, an expression that came out from a smart journalist. And now it's uh, in the Oxford Dictionary, so it's going to be there for eternity. Tell me about this Obama visit. You'll have been watching closely. We saw you singing the national anthem. I mean, how excited have you been? Well, I think uh, uh, the presence of uh, the, the, the head of state of uh, one of the most powerful countries in the world uh, bodes well for India. Uh, we enjoy the, the friendship and the association as much as uh, politically uh, the present government does. Uh, we hope that uh, this association fructifies into uh, a great amount of positivity. Um, there's been a lot of excitement. This is Mr. Obama's second visit to, to India uh, during one term of his presidency. And obviously it speaks a lot um, for the association that he and Mr. Narendra Modi, our Honourable Prime Minister, have been having over the past few days. You do a lot of work on issues like polio, you do work on poverty. I mean, it's interesting, we've spent the day here at Delhi University talking to the students, they're very enthusiastic, exactly as you would expect. But it is, you have to look at it and think it is a privileged, privileged position. Do you ever look at wider education in India and think there are huge inequalities and we have to make more progress on closing that gap? I feel very honored that I was uh, appointed by United Nations on the polio campaign and we worked for about eight years before uh, we could make India free of polio. Uh, and I feel very uh, proud of the fact that we were able to do that. I'm also working now on a campaign uh, against uh, safeguarding tuberculosis. We're going to be do another one for hepatitis. I already do a campaign on diabetes, which actually originates from, from London. Uh, uh, the Right Honourable Keith Vaz, Member of Parliament, uh, started this and uh, I'm very happy to be associated with him. But yes, as far as uh, education is concerned, that's been also a very um, important point for us. Uh, United Nations has also appointed me for the girl child and we work uh, strenuously. I do believe that the latest uh, campaign that uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has begun, uh, Beti Bachao, Beti Padhao, uh, save the girl child and educate her, 
is very vital for India. I have always believed that uh, women form 50% of the strength of any country. And uh, sooner or later, I see this percolating, this thought percolating into the rest of the country. We have uh, uh, given a lot of importance to women. And uh, in my own profession, if I may just look back, uh, way back in the 60s when I began, uh, there used to be just one lady on set. And that was the chaperone with the leading lady, a mother or a sister or somebody like that. But now if you watch uh, on our sets, there are women working behind the camera, there are assistant directors, they look after management, they, they look after production, they direct films. In the last few years, we've had some prominent women directors who've made uh, women-oriented films, and they've all been very popular and very successful. So yes, I do look upon the coming years to be very progressive in this front. Just a final thought about your new film. It's a very interesting concept. It's about uh, a mega famous film star, but actually it's an alcoholic who's dubbing all his voice and it's his voice that he is famous for and the conflict between those two. That's a very interesting concept. Yes, I do believe that it's, uh, it's a very unique concept. Uh, something that perhaps Indian cinema has not seen before. It's a very interesting and very intelligent plot. It's, uh, it's a wasted... Uh, um, wasted, decrepit, uh, um, alcoholic who's uh, leading a very, uh, very morose life and uh, is brought together uh, with another person who he lends his voice to because uh, that's a quality that the other person does not possess and how the two combine together with the help of a journalist to um, attain success in life. And then ego comes into play and what transpires after that is uh, 